Okay, um, got three more questions from the audience and I'll go over them right now. First one was in the area of refrigeration. And in the first pass, I spent a lot of time on the ideal gas law, pressure times volume equals NRT. A um, little complicated, want to do this in a simpler fashion. So let's, let's try it again. We have, a, we have a cylinder, closed cylinder, we have a piston. And the thing about heat is that it's, it's real simple. Heat is just atoms banging into each other. That's it, just how, how vibrant they are. So in this case, ambient air, not just regular air, is at 70 degrees. And this is, this is the representation of the heat activity. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we're gonna compress it. We're gonna push it in. Now the number of atoms stays the same, but the activity is going to go up. It's more active. Um, look, we're just saying that it goes up to 90 degrees. I haven't done, we haven't done a, um, oh, we haven't done PVRT, or PV equals NRT. So um, now we do. The third step is um, we blow 70 degree air over the 90 degree um, vessel, 90 degree tube. That's the third step. And then that, that process, that 70 degree process, reduces the activity. So it slows down to something more like this. Less, less banging around of the atoms. And the last step, which is, seems like the most magical step, but it's just following the, following the process, you back off the pressure, and now you have more space for the atoms, and they bang around less. They simply are farther apart. So this process took the temperature down to 70 for the compressed area, and then the last step took it down to somewhere between 50 and 60 once again. I'm just eyeballing. We have made 70 degree air cooler in this process of compression, cooling, and expansion. So that, that is how uh, refrigeration works. Hope that's easier than the first time I did it because we didn't, we didn't put the ideal gas law in there. Now the second request or, feed or question was in the area of octane. And what I did is in the process of describing octane, I wanted to show that it was, there were eight carbons in a row with one string or single bonds. I introduced a word called octene, and I said that it was a double string all the way through. And that's not true. Um, octene is actually, only has one double string, and then the rest are very similar to um, octane. So this, this octene, um, one double string or double bond. Now let's calculate the molecular formula of octene. We have to we put two hydrogens on here because we have we need four so we have two bonds and then two hydrogens. This one has three bonds so we put one hydrogen in and then the rest is kind of like our good friend octane. And then what we'll do, one, two, three on the end, what we'll do is we'll figure out what, how many hydrogens are on this molecule. Okay, first thing is two, one, and we have five the same. So five times two, and three on the end. Two plus one is three, plus 10 is 13, plus three is 16. Okay, so octene is C8, H16, octene. Now, we know our good friend octane is C8, H18. Now the use of octene, it's, uh, it, it's a molecule just like all these others, it's um, very similar to octane. It's used for a solvent, if you, if you go and just get octene, it's used for a solvent uh, with oil. So it's, it's used for cleaning or dissolving. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to just communicate that 
this we had all had single bonds or one string that was really important okay now the third the, the third question was um, in the area of why is heptane given a an octane rating of zero uh, and the answer is that when when you're processing oil uh, you're getting a mishmash of of strings there are many many types but one type of string heptane with seven carbons and 16 hydrogens shows up a lot it's very it's very common in processing oil so what the people that set the octane rating some petroleum engineer said let's let's set this to zero because it um it's pretty it's very common and it we can use um, we can use this as a reference, um, you know, to octane, which is which has eight carbons, which octane is 100. And the reason that we need these two numbers is that there are things called isomers, which are you just take carbon in any many many combinations and adjustments, um, carbon and hydrogen, and it's it's a mishmash of 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 uh, molecules. These isomers are have all kinds of different octane ratings, both above and below um, 100 and above 100 and below zero. So um, the companies want they have this mishmash, and they want to sell a blend which will act like um, like if you have 92%. Uh, octane rating it acts like 92% octane and 8% heptane even though it is a combination of molecules um, now the reason that you want to have different octane ratings is that the engine engines are have multiple compression ratios so here is a piston here's a cylinder and in here is a piston at the bottom of the crank and at the top this is top dead center which is how high this piston is going to go and um, right here let's go to the bottom uh, this piston is going to go up to this point and compress all this air down to this to this volume right here this is now that that means it has a high this is high compression now the reason okay so let's go over here let's do the same thing but let's have the let's have the piston start here and let's compress less air so this one goes exactly the same height but it starts off at a lower point why do you want this you've got you get more air up into the compression or the head to the where the compression occur or the combustion occurs and you can bore, burn more gas more air that's the limiting factor the air feeding into a cylinder and that more air more gas more power in a high compression engine now what you want to do is make sure that you have uh, a higher octane in this one than in this one because the heptane the the eight percent represented by this mishmash of molecules will tend to go off when the pressure is going up and the, and the heat is increasing the heptane the component of this will ignite sooner and what you want is a nice smooth movement of the piston up through the you know through the process you start combustion a little bit before top dead center but you don't want to have this this eight percent going off too early or else that combustion will be pushing down on an, a, a piston coming up and you'll get the the combustion fighting the piston you'll get a shake to the engine which will be perceived as a knock so you want to make sure that you have good quality higher quality um, high quality octane ratings because you, you don't want to have these high compression engines have the, the, the gasoline go burn too fast because you're going to get some extra heat in the process of um, raising this piston so that is why well octane is referenced 100 and heptane is zero just because heptane is very common in the processing of oil they just had to pick something and heptane was the choice for zero